Now let's consider the subject of linear inequalities. With linear equalities, okay, the work there is to try to isolate x to get a number. Here, where we won't have an equal sign, instead we'll have, say, a less than sign or a greater than or less than or equals or greater than or equals. We isolate the x and then what comes out is going to be a region in the real number line. So that'll be like a half line in either direction. Before we can get into solving the type of problems we're interested in, we first have to sort out the real number line and greater than and less than when we use negative numbers. So that's going to be a common sticking point. Now, if I were to say 2 is less than 4, we have no problem with that. Um, that's clear what that means. If I have four things, that's more than two things. If we take minus 3 less than 4, well, the way we could think of this, say we think of it with money, if I have plus $100, that would be money that I actually have. If I have minus $100, that would be money that's going out. That would be like having money that I owe somebody. So there's sort of a sense of direction there, a positive direction and a negative direction. So in that case, we'd definitely say, if I owe money, that's less than if I have money, or minus 3, less than 4. Note, the only thing I need to check in this one is that the negative is on the left-hand side. If I had minus 4, still less than 3. Where the confusion comes in, if we're not being careful, well, if I want to compare a minus 2 and a minus 1, the quick thing is to say that minus 2 is bigger than minus 1 because 2 is bigger than 1, but that's not going to work. The way you can think of that is, well, if I owe $200 and compare that to owing $100, you have more, you're still losing, but you have more if you owe at $100. So a better way to think of this, this minus 2 less than a minus 1, is to think in terms of position on the real lines. Instead of using greater than or less than, we'll instead talk about left and right. So for instance, if we have A less than B, what's happening on the real number line is that A is to the left of B. Okay, let's check. 2 is to the left of 4, that's clear. Minus 3 is to the left of 4, that's clear. Minus 2 is to the left of minus 1, that's clear also. So that straightens things out a little bit better in terms of language. Of course, if I want to go the other direction, A greater than B, then we'll just switch left to right. So that would be A is to the right of B. Now, when we sort out this language for left and right, um, if I have A less than B, it's clear that's the same as B greater than A. This process of just reversing the order or reversing the direction will be useful for making language a little bit more straightforward later on. So this is something we'll use eventually. Now, the answers to the problems that we're going to try to solve are going to look like these. So let's set up this language first. If we have a solution that looks like x less than a, okay, so a will be some number, x is going to be what we can put numbers in to check the statement. I read this as all x to the left of a. So what I would do, I would put a circle at a and then shade in the arrow going all the way to the left. Some things here that are worth noting. Okay, the open circle means we want everything to the left of A, but not A itself. Now, that's a little bit, there's a subtlety there that you need to wrap your head around because if you think about, say, what's the number next to three? First shot most students would go with would be, well, two is next to three, but the idea is, well, what about two and a half? What about 2.75, what about 2.9, what about 2.999? I can get numbers that go as close to 3 as I want without ever actually getting the 3. So that's why we use the open circle. So we're going to have numbers that are going to go all the way up to your A, but never actually get there. So that means open circle, don't keep the A. Then we also have this business of interval notation. For interval notation, the way I think of this, once you have your picture, just start at the left, see where you start, go all the way to the right, see where you stop. So in this case, well, if I start all the way to the left here, I'm going to start at minus infinity, and then I'm going to stop when I get to A. The way I indicate not to keep the A is with a parentheses as opposed to 
a bracket. So this would be how I write an interval notation, this half line here, where I'm not keeping the A. What goes with this, if the inequality goes in the other direction, I have x greater than a. We read this as all x to the right of a. So likewise, we'll put a circle at a, and I'll shade in everything to the right, going off to plus infinity. Again, we have the open circle. We'll have an interval notation going from left to right. We're gonna start at a. We're not gonna keep a though, so parentheses. And then that stops at plus infinity. Two other cases that we'll see. If we want to keep the A, that's an option, then we're going to have these bars underneath our inequality symbols, and that's just read as X less than or equal to A and X greater than or equal to A. The changes will be, when I draw the picture, we shade in the circle, and for the interval notation, we're going to use brackets on the A instead of the parentheses, and then that indicates A is being kept in the answer. Now, the inequalities we're trying to solve look like ax plus b less than c. The process is going to be exactly like for linear equalities, except if at any point we multiply through or divide through by a negative number, we have to change the direction of the greater than or less than. Now, if I was solving a linear equality, well, the process is as usual. We clean up our equation. So I would try to clear out any fractions, clear out denominators, distribute to get rid of parentheses, try to get all the X stuff in one place. So we'd want to isolate the AX, so that here that will be moving the B over. Then I'll divide both sides by A. If A is negative, we have to switch the direction of the inequality. That'll get us our expression with an isolated X. We talked about how to deal with the solutions on the previous board. And then we'll probably want to draw the picture, so you'll want a graph. And once you have the graph, you can go to interval notation. Now, what's this switch about? So let's just take, say I have one less than two. If I multiply both sides by a minus one, I'm not gonna get minus one less than minus two because we've got to think about left and right now. So if I look at the picture, if I have one less than two, that's just one is to the left of two. And if I go to the other side, we see that minus two is to the left of minus one. So you can think of it as if we multiply all numbers by a minus one, it's like we're gonna push the positives in the mirror, and so left and right are gonna switch. And so if I have one less than two, we multiply through by a minus one, I have minus one minus two, but then I gotta switch the direction of less than to greater than. Now, if you don't like the switch, there is a way to do your algebra to avoid it, and we'll talk about that. Let's take a look at an example. So let's suppose I have minus 3x minus 6 greater than 4 minus x. A good thing when we're doing this, which will be good for dealing with this switching process, I have to decide which side I want to have my x's on, which side I want to have my numbers on. So for the first pass through this, we're going to put the x terms on the left side. So we want to isolate the x. So I want to get rid of the x over here. I'm going to push the 6 to the other side that's gonna give me a minus two X greater than 10. Note there's a minus two in front of the X, so when I divide by minus two on both sides, I switch from greater than to less than. That's gonna leave me with X less than minus five. That's where we wanna wind up. Now for the picture, recall, we say here we want all X to the left of minus five. So I'll draw our number line. We don't have the equals, so we'll put a circle at minus five and then shade in everything to the left. Then if we want interval notation, I just start at the left and go all the way to the right. On the left, we're starting at minus infinity. I'm gonna go until I get to minus five and then stop. And because it's a less than, we put the parentheses rather than the bracket. And then that's an entire problem. 
Now, suppose we feel uneasy about this division by a negative. Can we avoid it? Definitely. So instead of going with x on the left, I'm going to put all the x stuff on the right. So the idea is kind of noticing that to get rid of the minus 3x, we're going to add a 3x to both sides, which is going to give you a positive in front of the x over here. So you have to do a little bit of thinking before you decide which side you want to go with for x. Now, we proceed. So I'll add 3x to both sides. That's going to give me the minus 10 greater than 2x. When I divide by 2 now to get the x by itself, dividing by 2 does not change the direction. It's a positive number. So I'll get a minus 5 greater than x. And then to get the x on the left side, I'm going to use our reversal from the previous board, which just says x minus 5, and then we change the direction to get x less than a minus 5, which brings us back to what we had before. Let's try an example with fractions. So I have x plus 4 over 5 less than or equal to x minus 1 over 2 minus a 1 fifth. The way we'll proceed, as I would do with an equality, I don't have to put up with fractions as long as I know how to clear the denominators. So I want to get rid of a 5, a 2, and another 5. So a 10 is going to be what does that. And we'll multiply through by 10 over 1 since we have each term as a fraction. Now, each term is going to get a 10 over 1. So we'll have 10 over 1, x plus 4 over 5, less than or equal to 10 over 1, x minus 1 over 2, minus a 10 over 5. Things to note, we're multiplying by a 10, which is positive. So the inequality is going to point in the same direction. For the x plus 4 and the x minus 1, we want to put them in parentheses because we're multiplying this 10 over 1 times the whole expression. So that's got to distribute over each term. Now, we cancel. So that's going to leave me with 2 times x plus 4, less than or equal to 5 times x minus 1, minus a 2. We distribute. I get a 2x plus 8, less than or equal to a 5x minus 5, minus a 2. When we collect terms, okay, so note I'm going to put the 2x over to the right-hand side. That'll go with the 5x to give me a 3x. On the other hand, we've got a minus 7 on the right. That'll go as a 7 to the left to give me a 15. We have 15 less than or equal to 3x. I'll divide both sides by 3, which is positive. So we'll have 5 less than or equal to x. And then to make the language better, we flip to get x greater than or equal to 5 or all x to the right of 5, including 5. I'll put that on the number line. So I mark a 5, fill it in, and then everything to the right. For the interval notation, okay, we come in from the left. We'll first hit the 5. We're going to keep it, so a bracket. And then that's going to go off to infinity. Finally, we consider some special cases of things that happen with linear inequalities. So you'll see when we do the examples. So for the first one, let's consider 3 times x plus 1 less than 3 times x minus 2. We distribute through both parentheses. So I have a 3x plus 3 less than a 3x minus 6. Cancel out the 3x's, and I get the statement 3 less than a minus 6. Two things to note. The x's have gone away completely, and what's left over is going to be a false statement. The answer will say here that there's no solution, because no matter what you choose for x, it never shows up in the final statement, so it doesn't matter what x it is, always going to produce a false statement. Now, another way to think of this, well, the idea is going to be you pick your favorite x, you'll never get this to work to come out to a true statement. For instance, if we take x equal to 2, okay, we're going to get 3 times 3 less than 3 times 0 would give me 9 less than 0, which is definitely false. No matter what x you try on this, you're always going to get something false. So no solution. On the other hand, 
if I take two times x plus one greater than two times x minus one, we distribute again, I get two x plus two greater than two x minus two. The two x's go away, leaving us with two greater than a minus two. No matter what x we pick, this is always gonna be a true statement. So that means if all x are working, the nice way to say that, and there's several ways, but we'll just go with right here, that means our solution is all real numbers. So the entire number line. Again, there's no x in this final statement. So another way to think of it is, no matter what x you pick for me, I'll put it in here, we'll always get a true statement. For instance, if I let x be equal to two again, what are we gonna get? Two times three is greater than two times one. That's six greater than two, and that's definitely true. And no matter what other x you choose, you're gonna get something true when you run it through here.